metalheads only. Today we're going to have a look at Leviticus. They are a Christian metal band from Sweden, formed in 1981. They're led by Jorn Stigson. They have four albums, but they broke up in 1990. Done. <laughs> no. Now this sounds like rock with clean vocals to me. There's guitar noodles, monotonous bass lines, and 4-4 time signatures. And they also made use of a Roland synthesis guitar and Moog Taurus pedals. So this could be also called semi-prog Christ metal. But without the hair. This band toured Europe in 86 and 87. They played the Green Belt Fest three times. That's in England. And the Scandinavian twice. That's a big indoor arena in Sweden. They made it to the U.S. in 88. And in 89 they toured Australia and the USSR. They also recorded Knights of Heaven in Los Angeles that same year. Leviticus reformed in 2003 to play at Bob Fest. That was Bob Dylan's 30th anniversary in music at Madison Square Garden in New York City. You remember Shot of Love? Other LPs are this is uh, Leviticus. I Shall Conquer, The Strongest Power, Setting Fire to the Earth, Together with Friends, and Two Best Ofs. And there is a touring faction of Leviticus as of 2016, but they're not big time. Christian rock has been around as long as rock, before rock if you count gospel. Christian rock is performed by Christians locally at churches who would seek to attract a younger body. Well, I mean body of Christ. You know. At first, fundamentalists eschewed all rock, even Christ rock. Country and gospel music would change fundamentalists who grasped the possibilities, and by that I mean dollar signs. Rock was emotional. Parents didn't want kids to have that, except for the love of God, of course. Also, rock was sexual. That's a no-no. But Elvis was a religious person. Eventually, there was no conflict. Elvis's 1972 album, He Touched Me, sold over one million copies in the U.S. alone. There are Leviticus bands in Sweden and Jamaica. What a popular name for a band. In the 60s, a Christian counterculture took hold. John Lennon's, we're bigger than Jesus now, remarks galvanized the Bible Belt. And Beatles records were burned in every city, not just the South. The Rolling Stone's Sympathy for the Devil in 68 set precise boundaries and spawned Jesus freaks, as well as hedonistic kids back masking on rock albums you know you play them backwards convinced many that the end times were upon us sex drugs and rock and roll were everywhere could the second coming of Christ be happening cooler minds inside church leadership prevailed and churches began to sponsor Christian rock bands as an alternative in order to hold on to their kids. It worked, and today's Christian rock is as widespread as ever. 
Are they any good? Well, you may not like the lyrics, but the music isn't half bad, and Leviticus is one of the best professional Christian rock bands to come out of the clouds. Hallelujah!